a 7-Up Jello salad from 63. Let me tell you, this recipe. <laughs> Cream cheese. Gotta get you fluffy. Half a cup of mayo. This went downhill pretty quick. Water, fire. Lime jello. More like crime jello. It's like reading directions to purgatory. Whoop. Star of the show. Now we have carbonated mayonnaise lime water. Don't ask me how it smells. Gotta chill. Pineapple and maraschinos. Everything's so sticky. Okay. Cool whip. One, two. Marshmallows with the mayo. Walnuts. Unholy. See you later. Good morning. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it's bad. It tastes like aggressively sweet fruit salad put into lime gelato. That doesn't make any of this okay. Ambrosia from 1951. So mid-century America has produced many suspect salads, many of which continue to leak out of the angsty states of Wisconsin and Minnesota. However, Ambrosia is arguably the one that started them all, the pioneer, if you will, and today we're gonna see if that's a good thing. Start by draining a pound and a half of mandarin oranges, a pound of maraschino cherries, and 20 ounces of pineapple. Time for a cup and a third of cream whipped. Keep in mind, this is a salad. <laughs> I like the whipped cream by hand. It's a lot more intimate. Now in goes a half cup of sour cream and a half cup of coconut. <laughs> Chop the cherries and a cup of walnuts. Sure. Walnuts aren't my favorite, but I've been known to never turn down on that. Mm. In goes the cherries, pineapple, mix. Just like me, the mandarin oranges are a delicate fruit, so they go in last. You know, this actually looks pretty good. <laughs> to the fridge. Once you're ready to serve, you fold in two cups of marshmallows. <laughs> to the salad. This has to be the most 50s thing ever. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? I like this one. It's quite pleasant. Almond milk from 1965. Now, I didn't know you could just make almond milk until I found it in the miscellaneous section of this here encyclopedia, and lo and behold, our first step was to cover a cup of almonds in cold water overnight. Good night. Good morning. Then we discard the water. Put the almonds in a blender, adding to it four cups of fresh water. Then we blend for about three minutes. <laughs> It's milky. Now we need to strain this to prevent bits of nuts from getting into the milk. You could use a tea towel or some cheesecloth or something literally called a nut milk bag. But that's normally used to prevent children. Uh, uh, this feels familiar. Uh, and bam, that's almond milk. I thought it was a lot more complicated than that. If you want it sweetened, add some sugar. If you want vanilla, add a bit of vanilla. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's almond milk. Good almond milk. So if you have some almonds in a blender, go to town. Amish lard cakes from 1895. Lard, 100% solid pig fat. A disturbing concept. And we're going to fry a dessert in it. Start with one and a half cups of sour milk. They mean buttermilk. Full cup of heavy cream. Oh my. Two eggy. Oh, this is thick. One and a half teaspoons of floof soda. A pinch of salt. Add flour until we get a pie dough consistency. I don't know what type of pie dough you're dealing with. Disturbingly dense. And now we heat two pounds of lard for deep frying. Pounds! Just get out of the box, please. Ha! There go, big boy. Wait, you didn't tell me what shape they are. When in doubt, triangles. I'm not ready. Just flip. Cooperate. You are- Oh my god. Hello, lard triangle. You were swimming in animal fat. How does it feel? Then we roll them in sugar. Ooh. That in my stomach like a bowling ball. The dominant flavor is saturated fat. No spices, just cream and poof. I have a sudden urge to hibernate. Anzac biscuits from the Great War. In Australia and New Zealand, this recipe is actually protected by law. Bake it wrong, to jail! I mean, not really, but you wouldn't want to get them angry. They have kangaroos. One cup of oats. I love oats. They taste like grandparents. I mean, they don't taste like- You know what I mean? One cup of flour. Then one cup of desiccated coconut. Not shredded, not sweetened, I'm talking dried flakes. You're gonna need some head and shoulders for that. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now into a saucepan goes 10 tablespoons of butter. I did have to convert this entire recipe from grams into freedom units. Then a quarter cup of golden syrup. Fire! Once the butter melts, we remove and add a teaspoon of baking soda. This is weird. Mm, it's foamy. Mm, mix. 350 for 12 minutes. Oh, boy, howdy. Crispy but chewy. Good biscuit. An asparagus cake from 1980. You know, I don't make these things up. They legitimately get printed in cookbooks for reasons I've yet to fathom. Our kitchen to yours. You can keep it. First, we need two cups of grated asparagus. Oh. Ah. Ah. 
This is food for sheep and people who do yoga. Next is a cup and a half of vegetable oil. Orange rind. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Vanilla asparagus. Really? Eight ounces of crushed pineapple and the juice. Sorry, pineapple vanilla asparagus. My bad. Three eggs. The dry ingredients are three cups of flour, two cups of sugar, pinch of salt, two teaspoons of baking soda, feminine, and a cup and a half of chopped nuts. Mix terror guacamole. Bad, bad. An hour at 350. Woo! So heavy. Powdered sugar. Orange. Mood juice. Woo! Mm. So it's a nice moist cake, but it's flavored like the underneath of a lawnmower. It's earthy. It's not quite right. A baked bean pizza from 1954. Now I'm scared of lots of things, including the IRS, clowns, and English majors. But I'm most afraid of beans where they don't belong. Oh dear. The sauce begins with a can of tomato paste. <clears throat> plus eight ounces of spaghetti sauce. Really starting out on the wrong foot. More like the wrong limb. Add oregano for an authentic taste. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in Italy. For the crust, we squashed together refrigerator biscuits. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying about authentic? On goes the sauce. A bit of Parmesan. Now 20 ounces of baked beans. What part of Italy are you from? Kentucky? In the center, some fresh mozzarella. How to get an entire country to hate you. Step one, this. 425 for 10, then 325 for 20. No. We can serve this with anchovies or sardines. How about a swift death? Oh. What? Mm, what is wrong with you? <gasps> you are sick. Oof. It's just vile. Boiled cookies from 1953. Now these were called boiled cookies because you boiled the ingredients. The 50s was a time of blossoming creativity. Today they are known as no-bakes, which is also the drug testing policy of anyone employed by the government. First up, we need a skillet! <laughs> Do you all call this a frying pan or a skillet? I call it Steve. In goes a half cup of butter. Two cups of sugar. Calories don't count on Christmas. Half a cup of moon juice. Yes, you can put liquid in dry measures. Volume doesn't change. Fight me. Three tablespoons of potted cake. Now we bring this to the boil and then let it boil for precisely one minute. Fire! You've never been there, have you? New positions are fun. It's boiling. Beep. Done. Now we remove from heat and quickly add in a cup of peanut butter, a bit of vanilla, and three cups of quick oats. Ah. Then mix, scoop onto wax paper and let them dry. They are firm. Judging by how they smell, I might be too. Hmm. Whoa, ma'am. They're like candy. Good cookie. Broiled humdingers from 1967. Don't ask. This is a spam recipe, one of mid-century America's favorite things, right up there next to big cars and being prejudiced. First up, we put our can of spam in a blender. It's gonna be one of those days, huh? Mmm, perfect. If this red flag was any bigger, it would be a blanket. Mm. <laughs> to the ground spam, we add a teaspoon of mustard, plus two tablespoons of ketchup, which is spelled catsup. Why? Quarter cup of moo juice and a half cup of oats. I just don't understand. Are there worse things than this? Doubt it. You know, jokes aside, I'm, I'm quite disturbed by this. The next step is to strain our can of halved peaches. Of course it is. The epitome of logic. I think I'm becoming jaded. <laughs> peaches onto a baking sheet. Form some patties. Squish. Mm. Broil these on the top rack for 10 minutes. Maybe they'll disappear. Well, some didn't make it, which is unfortunate because it means some did. Mm. Well, that was utterly horrendous. Thank you. No man this Valentine's Day? No problem. Let's make a 1950s candle salad. Start with one piece of lettuce. Oh, Betty Crocker, what are you up to? French Revolution, your pineapple. You could just use canned pineapple if you're a communist. Peel a banana. Betty, darling, put the banana in. <laughs> you're out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> this one's European. Insert. Insert what? One toothpick in the top. Add one maraschino cherry for the flame. Oh god, it's bleeding. For the candle wax. The what? And with that, your candle salad is finished. No shit. Doesn't tell you how to eat it. So I don't know if I need a knife and fork or I need to tie my hair back. Good morning. I mean, it tastes like a banana. Have a good Valentine's. Stay safe.
Cheese cookies from 81. Call me crazy, but I believe that cookies should be sweet, a dessert, a treat. This isn't that. Now our friends from the 80s have come up with a savory appetizer cookie, so ha uh -uh. We start by melting two sticks of oleo. This stuff also goes by the name of margarine, or wrong. <laughs> then a half pound of sharp cheddar. Mr. Cheese, I'm so sorry. Mmm, sloppy. A teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Worcestershire. A tablespoon of Tabasco. And two cup. <laughs> Plus two cup. I can't say it. <laughs> mm, Rice Krispies. I have never seen anything like this. Finally, a pinch of salt and two cups of flour. <laughs> Bake at 350 until golden brown. Oh, <laughs> no. That's not right. Spicy and cakey and crunchy. Just eat cheese. A chocolate potato cake from 1912. This is why we don't perform lobotomies anymore. Boil a potato. Did I mention this was a cake? Skins stay on, unlike Americans. Fire! Cream the butter. Can we at least have coffee first? Butter go boom. Should be a pale white. Eggy. Wakey, wakey. Who's tough now? Moo juice. Bloop. Simonim. Chocolate. I bet this recipe is just all the wrong answers on a baking test. Mm -hmm. Smells like dentures. Go away. Goodbye. For the icing, we boil butter, sugar, milk, and chocolate. My time has come. Not bad, dead people. All right. <laughs> You're not supposed to work. It's incredible, and I'm mad about it. Chocolate sauerkraut cake from 48. Thought this was a joke. Turns out I'm the joke. Sauerkraut. A whole cup. Soak in water and then drain. Better. One and a half cups of sugar. Cream time. You can use a mixer. I just do this to feel something. Eggies three. Flour. Half cup of cuckoo. Baking powder. Mmm. Water. Yummy. Fold in sauerkraut carefully. Or what? I'm gonna ruin your disaster? Can a cake be tried for treason? In she go- I know it's open! Sleep tight. Wow. Bring buttercream and chocolate to a boil. Ah! Okay. Mm. No. Incredible. It feels like coconut. I don't taste sauerkraut. Either chocolate fixes everything or this is alchemy. Chocolate zucchini bread from 1968. Now when I think of zucchini, I think of good barbecue, summer salads. Men, just not dessert. But we start such a dessert with a cup of flour, half cup of cuckoo, chocolate bite, and a teaspoon of floof soda. Now we melt a quarter cup of margarine. Beep. A quarter cup of an oil of my choosing. I'm guessing 10W30 wouldn't work. Cup of brown sugar. Two eggy. For the zucchini, we need one and a half cup shredded skin and all. I hate zucchini. Doesn't taste bad, it just makes me feel insufficient. Wet, dry, meh. This isn't just a chocolate cake recipe with a bit of zucchini. No, this has more zucchini than flour. 50 minutes at 350. Goodness gracious, cease and desist! Come on. It's really quite brilliant. It deepens the chocolate, keeps it nice and moist. I don't make the rules. The Christmas Fruitcake from 1900. So I've never made a fruitcake, but if you're anything like me, you are one. <laughs> Start with one and a half cups of butter and three cups of brown sugar, <laughs> half cup of treacle, and six eggs. How big is this cake? Four and a half cups of flour, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, cinnamon, plus one and a half teaspoons of fluff powder. Get him. I present to you the fruit. The mix is eight ounces each of candied orange peel, pineapple, cherries, dried figs, currants, dates, raisins, all soaked in an obscene amount of brandy. Look away, kids. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> It's been festering for a few days. Three cups of walnuts. This is ridiculous. <laughs> a lot of fruit, brandy, and nuts. Sounds like a good weekend. Three hundred for two hours. Done. Now time for a cheesecloth and more brandy. <laughs> well, there goes that. And now we just wait. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like I'm exhuming a body. Hello. Mm. Well, it's very moist and very potent. Don't feed too much to Grandpa, he won't make it down the stairs. Love it or hate it, it's the taste of Christmas. And that's quite fine by me. A Civil War cake. Of course it uses lard. Why not? 
Honey, call the police. Two cups of raisins. It's always the raisins. Add one egg of lard. What are you feeding your chickens? You happy? Sister. Ah, fire! A cup of coffee. No. One cup of coffee. This is a misdemeanor. I think I've summoned something. Brown sugar! Eggy! Lord! What do you want me to do with this? They call the CDC. This is the South's revenge. Ah! Flour. Apples. Add nuts. I, how much? I need nut instructions. Simonin! Woo! Smells deceased. Uh. Seems to have collapsed. Like the South. Mm. Tastes damp. Wet. A coal miner cake from 1936. Starting off on the right foot here with a half cup of lard. If I cut off my feet, do we still have to do this? This stuff is great, you know. You can run your tractor on it. Brown sugar! Drizzle of molasses. Is this the coal? Four eggies! They did you dirty. We seem to have made a chamber pot. Flour. Cuckoo. Half cup of strong coffee. Fire! Now we mix baking soda into sour cream. There are too many things happening. Get in! Then we alternate flour, coffee, flour, coffee. <laughs> you are banished. Has it unionized? Looks good, but looks can be deceiving. Oh, oh. You're very dense and pungent. Suppose I wouldn't mind it if I was in a coal mine, but in a coal mine, I'm not. A Coca-Cola salad from the 70s. So this recipe has been floating around the internet for quite some time now, and people seem to think it's from the 50s, but it's not. It's more so typical of the 70s or the 80s or a psychopath. We start with one package of cream cheese, <laughs> into which we dust a package of orange jello. Yeah, that really does say that. That's... that... <laughs> oh, oh no. Some high-vis cheese. Department of Transportation certified. Next, we take 10 ounces of Coke and we boil it. Mm. Fire! This is a very disturbing way to spend a day. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Just what I was feeling for lunch. Carbonated orange cheese gravy. Look away. Lastly, we have a half cup of nuts. At least the recipe is self-aware. <laughs> so we leave this at room temperature for a bit. Then to the fridge. Good morning. That's a lie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So first and foremost, it is disturbing, quite, but the potential is there. Because it has this cheesecake vibe, and the flavors are okay. It's just been corrupted. Coconut ice from 61. Now it's come to my attention that a lot of Americans don't like coconut, and you know what? It's okay to be wrong. But this here is an old school British candy which looks too simple to be good. We begin with a 15 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Half of it goes in one bowl, the other half in another. Then into each bowl goes a cup of powdered sugar. My sweet tooth is tingling. Mix. Then we dye one bowl pink by using a few drops of red food coloring. Boop. You know, as a kid, I've always loved pink, which was the first of many signs. And a little bit of nilla. Finally, to each bowl goes two cups of coconut flakes. Don't use sweetened. <laughs> you will kill somebody. One, two. Then to an eight inch parchment lined pan goes the first layer. <clears throat> Gotta pack it tight. Then the second. <clears throat> this is fun. And that's it. Pop it in the fridge for at least three hours to set. <clears throat> Ooh. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mm, these are just lovely. What do you think? There's no ice in these. <laughs> The perfect summer candy. Copycat Almond Joys from 1953. Yes, copycat recipes are nothing new, and neither are Almond Joys. In fact, one Mrs. Kirk from Montgomery, Alabama loved them so much, she wanted to make them herself. Let's go, honey. We start with an entire 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Mm -hmm. To which we add two cups of powdered sugar. Uh, mix. Then comes four cups of unsweetened coconut. That, that's a lot. Come on! Then press it into a large parchment-lined pan. I'm using a 13 by 9 inch, but you could use anything similar, like a casserole dish. <laughs> Once everything's flat and even, you're gonna need some almonds. You just line them up and press them in. <laughs> This is so satisfying. Now this goes to the fridge, preferably overnight. It just needs to be really hard. Ooh, cut! Ooh, yes! Now four cups of chocolate and two teaspoons of shortening or coconut oil. Melting over a double boiler. Fire! Then dip and cover. Hello! Done! Let him set. <laughs> mm -hmm. On the money! Mm, look at that! We did that! Mrs. Kirk, you're my hero. Corn cookies from 1930. Now, if cornmeal were to end up in my sugar cookie dough, I would consider that a mistake. But these people have done it on purpose. Do you know what that's called? 
Criminal intent. You begin by creaming a half cup of margarine with a half cup of sugar. They say using softened margarine is ideal. No, honey, what's ideal is not using margarine. What? So far, so good. And then came the cornmeal. Cornmeal and a sugar cookie. What a bright idea. Oh, cornmeal on the floor. I'm going to start needing blood pressure medication. Three quarters of a cup and half a cup of flour. Mix. Now we form a log. Come on. Be a good corn log to the icebox. You are frozen. And now we roll it in cornmeal. Cookies. Eight minutes at 375. Huh? Whoa. This is lovely. It's a sugar cookie with a bachelor's degree. Bravo. Deep fried Oreos from 2001. Now is this an old recipe? Well, it depends on who you ask. But it is absurd, vulgar, and without regard for culinary decorum. It's American. Our batter begins with one cup of pancake mix. Get out of the cup. Come on. Stop being difficult. Half a cup of milk. Moo juice! Tablespoon of vegetable oil. And one egg Whisk vigorously. Is my clock dead? <laughs> It is now. Next up, we fill a pot about four inches deep with oil. Fire! Now our oil is hot, so we just dip in our Oreos. Woo! And then they go. About three minutes on each side. This is so ridiculous. Woo! Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh. These are incredible. I mean, look at that. You're insane. But I love you. I'm a changed man. Absolutely wild. A fake apple pie from the Great Depression. This recipe was sent to me by Herbert Hoover Feet Picks. There's something for everybody. Instead of apples, this recipe uses Ritz crackers. Sugar! Water! Fire! Stir until disgusting. Crap time! Oh, you crafty. <laughs> Are you nine inches yet? Said 15 year old me. Lemon juice! I wish. 40 Ritz crackers. <laughs> What am I supposed to expect? Give him him! Suppose it's better than eating your offspring. Do I call the police or a priest? A priest. Honey, there's been an accident. Bake it 4.30. I'm bleeding. Oh boy. Whoa. <laughs> it tastes like apples. We found the first good one. A Fiesta Peach Spam Bake from 1954. Yes, folks, Thanksgiving is soon upon us, which means plenty of family drama, so I say why not just cut to the chase, serve this, and make everybody visibly upset. We begin by draining a can of sliced peaches. Save the syrup. Time for spam. Nothing says the holidays like ambiguous meat. Please exit. Now we slice it lengthwise four times, but don't go all the way through. Stunt the spam with cloves. Are you joking? You're not joking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. 2021's been a rough year. <laughs> <laughs> now we insert the peaches into the spam. Open up. Time to receive peaches. To the quarter cup of peach syrup, we add two tablespoons of brown sugar. Are you aware that the syrup is sugar? Mm. Now that's just vulgar. Add the peaches. 375 for 35 minutes. Oh dear. Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> that's not a good laugh. Because this tastes like if Christmas gave up. Frog eye salad from 1968. Start by boiling a pot of water. Fire! Cook a box of vicini de pepe to al dente. <laughs> you know, the other word for al dente is correct. To a new saucepan, we have a cup of sugar. Dash of flour. Two eggies. Then the juice from all of this canned pineapple. You see this? This is concern. Cook this, drain the pasta. Time to go. Ugh. We've chilled the both of these down and now we start combining. Pineapple, why? The author calls this her comfort food. I call it a mistake. Pound of mandarin oranges. A tub of Cool Whip. A cup of... <laughs> marshmallows. <laughs> Add salt if it needs it. It doesn't need salt, it needs help. To the fridge. <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah, so it's not good. Glorified rice from 1909. We start by cooking a cup of rice. Fire! Are you ready for glory? Cool down the rice gently. Opposed to what? What am I gonna use, a leaf blower? Now for eight ounces of pineapple and eight ounces of candied cherries. But there's rice. We quarter the cherries in half. Quarter the cherries? You're gonna make me stroke out. Precisely what realm of mathematics do you inhabit? <laughs> 
Finally, we need a cup of heavy cream. I don't like where this is going. And a half cup of powdered sugar. Then we gently whip this stiff the uh, Again with the gently? How do you gently whip cream, you tart? It's like saying gently have a car accident. Then you just fold everything together. Get it! Oh, not the rice! What is this? To the fridge! Now I'm told that this stuff is still brought to potlucks in the Midwest. Oh dear. I find that remarkably uncomfortable. People still bring this to functions for consumption. That would give me consumption. The Great Northern Nut Loaf from 49. Now, I'm not sure what makes this loaf northern. I just picked it because it has the most nuts I've ever seen. And I've seen my fair share. We start with nuts, which is unusual. In my experience, that normally comes last. We need one pound of mixed pecans and filberts. Filberts are hazelnuts, and they are my second favorite nut. My favorite doesn't come from a plant. Now we need to flour the nuts with three quarters of a cup of flour. You know, I do prefer them deflowered. A pinch of salt. Only a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. This is not going to rise, which is always embarrassing. Into a separate bowl goes three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Miller. Three eggs. Beat with a whisk. Never tried that before. Sounds painful. Finally, a half pound of dried figs. You know, fruit and nuts do go hand in hand. I would know. I'm both. Combine the two. <laughs> it's literally just nuts. 300 for 80 minutes. Done. Ooh. Mm. Whoa. It's a great taste. Nice and moist, but very crunchy. If you hate nuts, I can see you spitting it out. Not me. Ice cream cone cupcakes from 79. Now you'd think that ice cream cones are for ice cream, but no, nope. this is the 70s. We do what we want. We start with a half cup of vegetable oil, a cup of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla, <clears throat> and one egg. Then you whisk vigorously. <clears throat> for the dry ingredients, we have a cup and a half of flour, half cup of cocoa, mm. and a teaspoon of floof soda, baking soda. Then we alternate adding our dry ingredients with a half cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could always buy it. <clears throat> Mix. <clears throat> Mix. And finally, a half cup of hot water. <clears throat> Oh boy. We fill these up about two thirds of the way and they need to have a flat bottom, like me. Get it! Whoa! 350 for about 30 minutes. Hello! For the buttercream, we just beat a half cup of soft butter, slowly adding a cup of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. Yes, you can make buttercream by hand. I do everything by hand. I'm very lonely. Hmm. Mm, look at that! Mm -hmm. It's just a really tasty, fun idea. I love it. Leftover bread pancakes from 1947. Now I love pancakes, so a homemade recipe which is easy, needs no flour, and lets you use up some stale bread seems too good to be true. Let's see if it is. We start with seven or eight slices of stale bread. Mm. Just tear it up and put it in a bowl. Adding to it three quarters of a cup of milk. Moon juice! Time to mash! <laughs> Next, a pinch of salt. Two tablespoons of sugar. They recommend four if these are for kids. Can I be a kid, please? <laughs> Next is one teaspoon of floof powder, which is baking powder. I call it floof powder because it floofs. Finally, one egg. Beating thoroughly. A bit of oil. Flour. Then you just... <laughs> three minutes on each side on medium-high heat. <laughs> Ooh, smell really good. <laughs> mm, that, that is good. It's so fluffy. It's some good pancakes. I'm not even going to wait for my bread to go stale. I'm just, I'm just going to make these. Liver cakes from 1947. <clears throat> so the liver is an organ which collects and filters all of the toxins from an animal throughout their lifetime. So why we prance about and eat it is beyond me. With that being said, I've never tried it. Until now. Into a pot of water goes a pound of calf's liver. <clears throat> this recipe asks for calf or mutton liver. But when I asked about mutton liver to the butcher, he just asked if I was okay. Fire! While that boils, we need a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, flour, salt, pepper, plus dried sage, and onion. Then we drain what? I don't want to do this! Mince the liver! Ugh. You know, I used to have a sock like this. This is disgusting. <laughs> Two eggs! Get in. Now we make patties. <clears throat> what do you think we fry these in? Lard! Let me get my lard bucket. <clears throat> then you just... <clears throat> Let it large with liver and lard. <clears throat> There's something deviant about this. It tastes like metal. I don't like that. 
magic cinnamon sticks from 63. So this recipe finds a good use for ready-made pie crust mix. But of course you could use any leftover pie pastry you have or make your own if you enjoy that type of low-level anxiety. One pie crust mix. And this one needs five tablespoons of cold water. Boop. You gotta mix it with your fingies. Done! <clears throat> Roll this into a thin rectangle. <clears throat> now we sprinkle some coarse sugar on both sides, pressing it in with your rolling pin. I like sugar. Get in! Now into three tablespoons of melted butter goes six teaspoons of simonium mix. And then on it goes. This is very satisfying. I like you. Fold this in half and cut into strips. They're so cute. Now twist and onto a baking sheet. We bake these at 350 for about 20 minutes. Oh, yes! Oh, I like a cookie. Mm. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to eat all of these. Magic peanut butter cookies from 84. These are three ingredient cookies, which means I have some serious doubts. Because a normal cookie contains butter, milk, salt, baking powder, flour. This recipe just says no. We start with one cup of peanut butter. Mm. A half cup of sugar. Plus one egg. And that's it. <laughs> this is not how you make cookies. Just roll them out. Then cross them with a fork. There's no way. This is gonna end up a melted tray of peanut butter. 350 for 10 minutes. No. Come on. How? You cheated. <laughs> These are brilliant. Melt in your mouth, brilliant. <laughs> Here I was thinking I knew how baking worked. It's not fair. Peanut butter bread from the Great Depression. Now the depression was rough, and while some people like it that way, the world of baking didn't. Butter, sugar, and eggs were scarce, but there was shelf-stable peanut butter. Start with two cups of flour, a pinch of salt, only a quarter cup of sugar, and four teaspoons of baking powder. Instead of typo. We want the bread to rise, not generate thrust. On this episode of Bread Goes to Space, mix. In goes one and a third cup of moo juice. That's milk. Now the half cup of peanut butter. You know, Peter Pan came out in 1928. Brave king. I waited until 2019. Get him! Fold! I don't know about this. There's not much to it. Meow. Bake at 325 for about an hour and 10 minutes. Well, it smells divine. <laughs> That's a good crumb. Man. This is stellar. It's perfectly peanut buttery and sweet. Mm-hmm. So good with so little. This is why I bake. Peanut butter onions from the Great Depression. Like kissing women, stuffing onions full of peanut butter feels rather unnatural to me, but I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures. Start by French revolutioning our onions. <laughs> now you can use any type of onion, but I use the round ones. The only type I can find. We need to create a flat bottom. <laughs> Let me get some reference. <laughs> Perfect. Time to scoop out the middle. <laughs> oh, boy, this onion's strong. The military grade. God damn. Woo! Okay, now that we have a hole in our onion and we look like we've just come from a wake, we need to stuff it. For that, we need a quarter cup of peanut butter. <laughs> Mixed with half as much breadcrumbs. Why? I suppose it is called the Great Depression for a reason. You know, I don't typically stuff vegetables. Mix. Much prefer stuffing fruit. Do we really just bake this? <laughs> we do. 375 for an hour. <laughs> a presentable dish. Honey, this has a face made for radio. Closed casket funeral. It's not so much bad as it is unsettling. Simply just no need to do any of this. Peanut butter soup from 1941. So this cookbook was put out by the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company to make sure people were getting adequate nutrition during the war. And this soup here is apparently the perfect meal when it comes to ideal macronutrient intake. We've come a long way in 80 years. Into a saucepan, we start by melting five tablespoons of lard. You know, in the story of my life, lard is the closest thing I've ever had to a nemesis. Fire! Once the lard is melted, we make a roux by whisking in five tablespoons of flour. <laughs> Now that we've got some color, we mix in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. <laughs> diluting it with the same amount of water. <clears throat> Finally, we have a pinch of salt and just a half cup of peanut butter. Get in! Oh, it is, this is thick. Today we're serving up hot beige. Come get your bowl of brown. Give me a I don't understand. This dish has no idea what it's trying to be. It is confused. It isn't terrible. It's just an unfortunate way to consume peanut butter. 
Peppermint patties from 1946. Now, I didn't know that one could make these at home. I thought it was a closely guarded industrial process, but apparently not. Take that, big peppermint. We start with one cup of sweetened condensed milk. In goes one and a half teaspoons of peppermint extract. Be very careful with this. this stuff's stronger than my desire to drop out of college. Slowly add five to five and a half cups of powdered sugar. Christmas time means sugar time. You can use a stand mixer. I'm just easily frightened by machinery. <laughs> Done. Now you might need more or less powdered sugar. You're just looking for a workable dough. Parchment. More powdered sugar. <laughs> Hello, Dolly. <laughs> to the freezer. Now over a double boiler, we melt four cups of chocolate. Adding to it two teaspoons of shortening. Get off of the spoon. Fire. Then once your chocolate is melted and your patties are firm, you take a fork and then woo, it's a little bit messy. They don't stop. To the fridge. Mm. Woo. Yes. Look at that. You can do that. 10 out of 10! How are these so perfect? A perfection salad from 1961. In typical 60s fashion, we're using gelatin. We meet again. Nothing says salad like animal collagen. <sighs> Half cup of boiling water. Fire! <laughs> Apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, bit of salt, in you go. Now we shred celery, carrots, and cabbage. Always wash these real good. Celery's just like your parents, dirtier than you think. <laughs> this was supposed to be a fun way to get kids to eat their vegetables. How'd that work out, America? Onion powder, pepper. Okay. What's the point? Cool. A loaf pan? Really? I just love when my salad comes in a brick. Good night. Good morning, it's time for mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> What have you perfected? Garbage! It's cold, limp, and crunchy, and bad. A pinto bean cake from 55. I don't even know what to say about this one. We start by draining two 27-ounce cans of pinto beans. So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, now we put one and a half cups of peanuts through a grind -a mat Where did the peanuts come from? What's a grind -a mat Are you all right? Put the beans in the grind -a mat This is not, how can I say, right? Uh, oh, no! Ay, senor. Pesadilla total en la cocina. Three quarters of a cup of honey. To this baby food looking refried funeral? How did you come? up with these ingredients. Did you just throw a grenade down aisle six? Five eggies. Now the chickens are implicated. What is that? Make sure to clean your grind -a mat I'm not concerned about your precious grind -a mat Lastly, we have half a cup of melted butter and two teaspoons of floof powder. Yeah, good luck with that. Only thing this is going to rise up from is the dead. Catastrophe of the bone in 45 minutes at 375. What? It's a cake. How? <laughs> you have no right. Soft, dense, rich. No. This is phenomenal. A polka dot prune loaf from 1951. So we're either gonna be polka dotting the loaf or polka dotting the toilet. I know where I've got my money. Start by cooking 28 prunes, which is actually 28 too many. Three cups of Bisquick mix. Not sure if I'm curious or scared. Eggy moo juice. Now we form a dough. I wanted to make this last year, but I couldn't because there was a toilet paper shortage. Roll out and cut into 28 squares. Don't look at me. I couldn't tell you where this is going. I just know it's the wrong destination. Melted butter. Sugar. Zimmin. Then we wrap and dip each prune before going into a loaf pan. This has to be the most complicated laxative on the planet. Dip. Spice in the pan. Keep the balls arranged closely. That is solid advice. First row done. Row two. Top the third row with nuts and bake. I don't know about this. <laughs> Between the bisquick and the prunes, it's just very odd. Plus, it's liable to punish the porcelain. A pork belly fruitcake from 1915. Meat and desserts was quite common back then. So was botulism. Steep a pound of pork in a cup of water. Fire! Yeah. Honey, would you like Earl Grey or pork? I'll take a divorce. Sugar! No. Cup of molasses. Sweet, bitter, and meaty. Like my ex. Yeah, why is it foaming? Do you think you could hear me? Currants. Peel. Apple juice. What? Ginger. Don't say it, Dylan. Simonium. Needs flour. One, two, three. How big is this cake? Ah! 350 for two and a half hours. Suppose any less and it might gain consciousness. Chungus. She's looking like a house foundation. All right, we got two fruitcakes here. Ah. Uh, hmm. Mm -mm. What's scary is that it's not terrible. It's got this oily richness to it, but something just ain't right. I think it's the pound of pork.
Potato candy from the Great Depression. Just like my relationships, candy is inevitably unhealthy, so potato seems a peculiar addition. Peel and boil one russet! Ah! This recipe only has three ingredients, so I'm a bit scared. Your time has come! Add eight to ten cups of powdered sugar. Cups? Cups? Eight is the low end. There shouldn't be eight to ten cups of anything. This is poundage of sugar. Um, the potatoes are gone. It's turned to liquid. Are you a sorcerer? So much powder. Reminds me of my summers in Colombia. We literally now have a dough which we're gonna roll out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This potato. <laughs> Jar of peanut butter. <laughs> Every turn in this recipe has been a left. Come on. This feels familiar. To the fridge. Well. <laughs> Bustin. It's good. I'll be damned. A pound cake from 1904. Pound cake is one of my favorite things to do, but I'm single, so it's been a while. It's called such because the traditional recipe is a pound each of butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. Nothing else. We start by beating the butter. <laughs> now we slowly cream in a pound of sugar. Oh boy! Now I'm beating and creaming by hand because as any man could tell you, that's how we all first learned. <laughs> Good heavens. How many eggs? Nine. We beat them in gradually. This is wild. And finally, the flour. <laughs> Fold into a bunt. We bake this in a moderately slow oven for 80 to 100 minutes. Hello. <laughs> I really just JFK'd this cake. Man, that's wonderful. For something that doesn't have any flavoring at all, you would not believe it. With a texture like nothing else. It's very good. But we don't talk about this. A ration cake from World War II. So it's the 40s and we don't have any butter, sugar, milk, or eggs, and we need to make a cake. What do we do? Panic! Into a saucepan goes two cups of raisins, plus one cup of water. In the interests of civil defense, we look to raisins to substitute our sugar. So you want me to boil raisins? It ain't easy being a patriot. Fire! This is awful. A half cup of lard. Just give up. Don't make a cake. <laughs> a whole cup of molasses. No, this is not worth it. It's not. Looks like barbecue sauce. Smells of death. For the dry ingredients, we need one and a half cups of flour. Half teaspoon of baking soda. And the only spice we get is cloves. Cloves. It's always the cloves. Mash the raisins. It's been nice knowing you. This would make me enlist. Get in. Get off. 325 for an hour. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, ma'am. Just no. Ooh. A roughage loaf from 1892. Now my first thought was who comes up with this? And then I took a look at the front. My man looks like he does taxes for fun. We start with an entire cup of wheat germ. Roughage is what dead people call fiber. And this is enough to incapacitate one medium child. Half a cup of flaxseed. You sure this wasn't meant for a bird? One cup of buttermilk. And a cup of molasses. This takes a while to come out. Don't worry, I did too. Mm. Then we leave this to soak for half hour, just to make it edible. Half cup of prunes. And of course it's the prunes! What else would it be? This man's really out here making people B-52 their toilets. This is either gonna plug you up or bring the morning thunder. Your boy said friendly fire. A cup of whole wheat flour. Have you no mercy? A teaspoon of floof soda. Get in, prunes! Ugh. This is culinary terrorism! 350 for 40 minutes. When I tell you that this is a prick, I mean it. It is a piece of masonry. Ooh. Tastes like a bookshelf. Books included. That is bad. A seafood mousse from 1972. So they describe this dish as an elegant and fancy way to elevate family dinners. However, upon first glance, I would describe it as an ornate pile of sh you Start with a cup and a half of canned crab. I love crab in a can. Yeah. <laughs> Why does it have a diaper? Is the crab diaper integral to this dish? Well, you never know. Cup of celery. Celery, if water was a vegetable. <laughs> Marinate this in some lemon juice. Tabasco. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> My car on a cold morning. Worcestershire sauce. Salt. And onion powder. Now atop a double boiler, we melt eight ounces of cream cheese in a can of tomato soup. Fire! Now to a cup of water goes three packets of gelatin. You knew this was coming. It's like watching a car crash. Ah! I move this to an ice bath. Once it's thickened, we fold in a cup of mayonnaise. Whatever you think elevate means is wrong. Finally, our crab. It's just morbid. To the fridge. Ah!
Huh? Whoa. Oh. That's fancy, all right. Fancy feast. Some good cat food. K plus. A shoe fly pie from 1900. A favorite of the Pennsylvania Dutch who apparently have this for breakfast. Now that's what you call bravery. No, 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 no. No sticking. You're gonna die here. Yes. Time for filling. An entire cup of molasses. Very cheeky. Three quarters of a cup of water. And one very lonely, very dead eggy. A teaspoon of baking powder. What exactly are we trying to raise up? Hope. Bigger with whisking. Very wet. We get to make a crumble. Sugar. Flour. Then some lard. What is it with dead people and their obsession with this? <coughs> yes, I just love baking. <coughs> oh, hello. Ooh, but uh, that's molasses. Very sweet, very bitter. If you love molasses, this is the pie for you. A Snickers salad from 1974. Yes, this is one of these salads, which definitely isn't a salad because America is unsupervised and they can't be stopped. We start by chopping 10 ounces worth of Snickers bars. Hey Dylan, what you doing? Oh, I'm just making my salad. You know, with the, with the chocolate bars. Come on. Cup of cold milk. Mood juice. Two packs of vanilla pudding. Uh... Four Granny Smith apples. That's for what? Solidarity? Granny don't deserve this. Whatever happened to respect your elders? Now into the pudding goes a tub of Cool Whip because we don't give a shit. In goes the apples. And the Snickers. Oh. You don't measure this in calories, no. You measure this in years taken off of your life expectancy. For best results, chill. You need to chill! <laughs> Is it good? No. Is it bad? No. It's sugar! Go ahead, feed this to a child. You're gonna yeet them into orbit. Goodbye, Johnny. Post-terrestrial. Where's Johnny? Johnny is gone. spaghetti o jello ring from the 60s. Now, I've been unable to confirm whether or not this recipe actually existed in the 60s, not that I particularly want to, but seemingly everybody and their dog has sent me this. <laughs> Into a saucepan goes a quarter cup of tomato soup, quarter cup of water. Now two packs of gelatin. Wonder what demon will summon today. Fire! Now that this is completely smooth, we remove from heat and add two cans of SpaghettiOs. Is life insurance expensive? Into a bunt. Oh. Good night! Ooh! Did I mention there were sausages? Cause there are sausages! I don't wanna do- I don't wanna do it. That is unnatural! It's like- it's like a morgue! I need a hug. A spam pie from the 1960s. A little late in the century for war crimes. Crust is saltines. Downshift. <laughs> Boda. Eggy. Marjoram. Are you just making things up? Who are you? You know, I've never been particularly religious, but today might be the day. A cup of evaporated milk. Have you lost the plot? I feel like if I do this correctly, I'm gonna invoke the spirit of Richard Nixon. This ain't food, honey. This is a bioweapon. <laughs> Cheddar, you're a monster. Liposuction looking. Decorate with almonds. D decorate? How do you decorate a tumor? He says, don't worry, they'll toast in the oven. We're not concerned about the almonds. I am in utter fear. Oh, salt! God damn! Yeah, this is severe. It tastes like an IHOP kitchen floor. Survival bread from 1972. This bread is claimed to last upwards of seven years, or roughly the amount of time it's taken me to get my bachelor's degree. We start with a cup of sugar, quarter cup of honey, the same of water. Then we bring to a boil with a pack of lemon jello. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that jello is inevitable. Oh, we love jello. Shut up. Fire! For the dry ingredients, we need two and a half cups of powdered milk, two cups of oats. <laughs> oh, stop that! How am I gonna survive the apocalypse if I can't survive oats? Once whatever this is has boiled, you add it to the dry. Oh, shit! Add a bit of water if we need to. Sweetie, this needs a lot of things, but water isn't one of them. Then we mold it into a brick. Ah, so thick! 30 minutes, 350. Huh. This is an enigma. It is quite dry, but not in a bad way, like a biscotti. I would take this camping. Tomato Aspic from 1939. Yes, this is arguably the most infamous dish of the 20th century. At one point, it was on every menu from coast to coast. We start with three cups of stewed tomatoes, then a onion. What is the size of this onion? This thing's heavier than my self-doubt. 
Mmm! One celery stalk. Slicey slice. And now for the most pointless herb, the bay leaf. I think of these like small men. You'd have a hard time telling whether it's in or not. A pinch of salt and sugar, plus a single clove. So what are you doing tonight? Into a pot! Fire! Cooking for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we soak two tablespoons of gelatin in a half cup of water. Now we strain this to remove any trace of reason from the dish. Yeah. And the gelatin! I don't like the look of this at all. To the fridge! Whoop. What do you think we garnish this with? Did you guess mayo? Stop jiggling! And some paprika. <laughs> this is just a commendably daft idea. It tastes like somebody killed Italy. It's like geriatric ketchup. A tomato soup cake from 1950. Ah! What's the difference between margarine and shortening? The amount of time spent on the toilet. We need reinforcements. Sugar in a carton. Ah! Creamy. Sift your flour three times. Lady, your cake has tomato soup in it. This is the least of your worries. Clove, cinnamon, and nutmeg. With the soup. Can't hide from me. I wish you could. Bloop. Uh. Siminem! No, no, no. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, that lady Carol is at the barbecue again. Careful not to overmix. Sorry, I'm just trying to kill it. it. Smells like a hospital. Tomato spice. If pumpkin spice got hit by a bus. At least it's not moving. Icing. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Doesn't taste like tomato. Tastes like chocolate. A Valentine's cream pie from 59. Mm-hmm. Now I can't think of anything better for Valentine's Day than a good old-fashioned cream pie. And this one features the maraschino cherry pastry. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. For the pie pan, we're going to want a nine inch. I know I do too. If you've got one, don't just force it in. Be gentle. Now whether or not to edge is up to you. Some people aren't that patient. Blind bake at 425 for 15 minutes. Mm. This finished a bit early. Happens to the best of us. Into a saucepan goes a cup of sugar. Quarter cup cornstarch. Two eggies. Two cups of moo juice. Quarter cup of cherry juice. Hopefully it'll be pink. Bring this to a boil and stir constantly. Fire! If your hand gets tired, just keep going. I'm single, so I'm used to it. Once it's thickened, we remove from heat and add in a half cup of chopped cherries. In you go. To the fridge. Next, a cup of cream whipped. Some people are into that. <laughs> now we get to top. That's always fun. Mmm, mmm, I like that. Very sweet, but I like it. Velveeta fudge from 1984. There are a lot of ways to make fudge, most of which aren't as problematic as this, but then again, who are we to fault the 80s? Start with a cup of butter in a heavy pan. I reckon this is a heavy pan. Heavy with the burden of whatever crime it is I'm going to commit. We melt that down with a half pan. <laughs> half pound of Velveeta. Neither scientist nor scholar knows precisely what Velveeta is. It is the occult, the great unknown. Fire! Well, this is already critically disturbing. In goes half a cup of cocoa powder. <laughs> it's cheesy. <laughs> Next up is two pounds of powdered sugar. Hold on. <laughs> yes, I see. It's the whole bag. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I'm not sure how this whole bag's gonna fit in here, Mildred. Her name is Mildred. This is not gonna work. It's not. Oh, no way. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Finally, you take off the heat and add in some nilla. Oh, it's like a tumor. To the fridge. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good fudge. A water pie from the Great Depression. Can you bake a pie with four ingredients? Yes! I could also eat my mattress. Fire your oven. I'm sorry, but we have to let you go. Pastry! It's been 13 months. What if I told you I hate pie? Oh boy, it fits! Fork it! Not that desperate. Blind bake the pastry. That's rude. Are you still here? Damn it. Add three gills of water. This written for a fish. Is this a joke? Sugar! Flour. I think this qualifies as a pre-existing condition. Unconstitutional! Top with butter. We're not even at a red light. This is not legal! <laughs> Alright, it finished a bit early, like my ex. <clears throat> it's a breast implant. <laughs> no, ma'am! <laughs> Very bad! Tastes like lint. Soggy lint. <laughs> A Watergate salad from 1976. One of the many questionable substances people experimented with in the 70s. Pistachio pudding. In you go! <laughs> Brushed pineapple. Hello, you have any greens, sir. Cup of Fluffy Boys. Smells like a Palm Springs retirement home. Time to beat it. Cooperate! <laughs> Perfect. Good night. Optional walnuts. Walnuts are never optional. Oh my. Nixon wished it was this easy. Cheers. Ooh. Yep.
Nixon would have loved this. It's not bad, it's just a cup of diabetes. I can feel my teeth rotting.